Ghost Cold Magazine welcomes in Paul from Blackberry Smoke. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. You doing okay? I'm great on this Monday, man. How's everything going? Oh, all good here. Just, you know, at the house, doing family stuff, oh, getting it hey, all together. You know, man, um, I, I start a lot of these interviews off the same way. It has been a rough time for everyone the world over. It's been a rough time in our industry. If there has been any saving grace, a lot of artists tell me they've gotten to spend more time with their family. Nobody wants to be off the road and not making money, especially when you have a brand new album. I'm hopeful that you're well, your family, the band, all their families and friends are okay. And uh, that, you know, you're finding some silver linings in these uh, dark clouds sometimes. Yeah, totally. It's, it's, been, it's been weird. You know, it's strange, you know, for everybody. I think the first two weeks we got home, I was sitting outside, you know, from when the pandemic started. I was sitting outside drinking a beer going, I get used to this. And then three weeks later, I was like, all right, I'm ready, ready to go back. I started to really, really get worried. Yeah, many of us, man, many of us were worried. Like, oh. what does this, when do we get back? Do we ever get back? What happens? And then yeah. you, you guys have been, you've been a musician for a very long time. The band has been in oh, existence yeah. for over 20 years. And this has to be the long, you know, obviously you're making a, you were making a record this year for this year anyway, but, you know, it's got to be right. like the longest period of time you have been, you know, not doing too many shows in your whole life. Yeah, it's, it's been, I mean, I was playing shows, you know, before the bands before Black Bear Smoke, you know, you know, way back and, that has literally been the longest I've been home, probably, God, almost 26 years. Wow. It's trippy, man. <laughs> it is trippy. But on the plus side, uh, we're getting stuff back. We're getting tours and we're getting shows and festivals back. And uh, You Hear Georgia is the brand new album. And you guys are, it actually looks like you're going to get to play it in front of people, which is amazing. <laughs> Totally. We're, we're, we're over the moon about it, man. It's finally, now that it's out, you know, we had the, uh, the four songs out or the three before the fourth. And uh, just looking forward to playing the songs live, you know. Obviously, we can't jump out there and do the entire record in one night. We have other songs and people want to hear other stuff too, you know. So, but uh, we, piece by piece, we get to play. Show by show, we get to play the song. So it's, it's, it's exciting. And also, like you said, to be back on the road too, it's definitely exciting. It's, so yeah that's it's a good time yeah things are turn, things are uh you know turning around i feel very hopefully optimistic that we're going right. to get everything back i saw you guys just booked a whole tour of europe which is you know you guys are huge over there they love you there so yeah. uh which is always funny to me that like england and and uh, the netherlands and, and i love my brethren we're partially we started in europe as a zine so like i love europe everybody knows we have a big following there but uh yeah it always bugs me out that they love their you know they love blues southern rock country out and they have whole festivals for just country in in europe which is a like kind of funny <laughs> yeah they're, they're festivals like you're talking festivals right yeah yeah so yeah they they, they have it down to a science man it's it's they know how to festival I mean, it's it's pretty happening. It's cool. Like we get there and do, um, say we go on uh, in the afternoon, and we get to stay the rest of the day, see bands we don't ever get to see. Cause we're always touring. And as soon as I get off stage, I'm in festival mode. Like immediately, me and Brandon and and Doc are just pretty much, you know, all of us pretty much are. But we usually hit hit the crowd, you know, and go nice. hang out and watch the shows, man. Uh, I'm still a fan of music. <laughs> yeah, it's important. And you get to see your friends and you get to see, you know, and I'm sure not just bands, but, you know, just industry people, road, you know, tour managers, yeah. everybody you guys have run across in the many, many years. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to having you guys come back over there and uh, do your yeah. thing. And again, this album's awesome. Seven albums into your career and uh, you guys keep changing and evolving and writing these really strong songs. Like, that's the main thing. I think uh, if you can't write great songs, you don't have great albums and you don't have a chance to keep doing this. So you guys have been able to really nail down this songwriting thing. Like to us, well, I don't, I don't want to say a science cause I think it's, you know, it's not quite a formula, but uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's records very strong, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I had a good time recording it and, Bob and everything. It was, it was a, to be in the studio with all of us is, it's always like a, still to me, it's like a treat. You know, it's just fun to be, in the environment and to get in there and play the songs and knowing we're doing that is just, I don't know, just trips me out still. So. Nice. After all these years. 
Nice, man. That's good. It's important. It's got to be fresh also. Like if it's a, oh, yeah. it's to say about marriages, if it's not new, it's through, right? So like a you band so. is also a marriage and there's a lot of, a lot of y'all. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a lot of y'all and a lot of personalities and a lot of writers. So I always wanted to ask you guys, you know, how, do you guys bring in individual songs? How do you guys like start a record well, from the scratch? Well, it's, it's like for us, it's, past few records also you know charlie had a couple ideas he talked around to you know with some of his friends some of his writing partners that he would write with and we all of us trust that you know we, we don't we're not one of those people like say if i present an idea and it doesn't go through my feelings aren't hurt you know i just i, I get it. it just it works so some of the other songs that get brought in and that he's worked with other people they sound good to me you know so I like the way they come out, you know, so we just go in and put our two cents in and just knock it out. Like this, this record, you wrote with a, a couple other people and the songs were just, I dug them the first time I heard them. I, I can usually tell in the, in the first couple of seconds of hearing a song, just like, oh, that'll do it. I just been that way all my life. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. I think, the, I think the songs are just, they did a great job writing them and, we had a blast recording them, so it worked. I think it's a great record. Word. You could do a lot worse than writing songs with Jamie Johnson and Warren Haynes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you do a lot worse. Totally. totally. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, that, and, uh, I, was, I was really cool to have them on the record, too. You know, you know, they're both sweethearts, and, and Jamie's hilarious. You sit and talk to him, he just cracked me up. I mean, what a good dude. Nice. Warren oh, yeah. Great too. Yeah. I understand that uh, like Charlie and Warren have become friends and that's how that kind of happened, which is really super cool when your idols and your heroes become actual friends of yours. It's got to be a trip. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Touring with them, you know, Government Mule and, you know, have talking with Warren and it, it's kind of surreal, you know, because I'm a huge fan, obviously, I'm a guitar player and singer. So just to sit and watch them do their thing and him just play so effortlessly. It just, it just, it's mind blowing. I'm usually in the audience when Government Mule comes on anyway. I go grab a beer and run out there just so I can sit and watch. And it's very freaky when he calls you up on the stage to jam. <laughs> I can imagine. Geez, that's a lot yeah. of pressure. <laughs> yeah, he's he's cool like that. He's not one of those one of those dudes that'll just kill you when you go on stage. He, he you know plays around so you, so you're not really you know obviously he's untouchable. But he won't, you know, I guess they bear the crap out of you. <laughs> nice. He's very cool about that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's like James Brown. He'd play you on and he'd play you off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to help yeah, you. And he could sing. I love the way he sings his voice. You know, it's just a lot of people don't talk about that. I think it's, he's got an amazing voice. He's very soulful, man. I just, Love it. He uh, really developed himself as a solo artist the most, you know, obviously the last couple of decades, which is great and great and just great for music in general. The guy's yeah. a treasure and we need to keep our uh, our heroes with us and yeah. out there as much as possible and support them. And, and Jamie is kind of a new legend, you know, he's, uh, you know, in his in his space, he's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's, I have like a weird relationship. There's like this really great new southern rock and southern and country rock kind of uh happening it's kind of a throwback but also modern and jamie mm -hmm. is a real big part of that and shooter and people like that and there's and like i and then i compare it to like the pop country stuff and there's no comparison unfortunately and some of it's great and well produced and great talents and stuff i'm right. not knocking it it's not my thing but like right. yeah like a jamie is like you know you can see a thread from like the history of the genre to like a guy like jamie and i think you guys too i appreciate that you know, I was telling my wife a couple of weeks ago, I was like, when when I hear Jamie sing, it, it there's something to, it just does something to me. I just, I, we look at each other and go, unbelievable, wow. It's just, I don't know how to, some of this phrasing and stuff and how he not says his voice and, you know, him just going, hmm, like that, you know, in a song where you can hear it, some, that some of it's just perfect. And, and that track's baller i love that track so much man it's such a good song and uh, yeah man the whole record is is awesome and uh it's uh i wonder like as you guys progress into your career now that we're going to get our shows and, and uh, tours back like you know how do you guys uh 
figure out a set list at this point. You start to have like, I hate, I, everybody's going to want to hear Hey Delilah and some of these other new tracks. And it's like, oh, we've got to fit that in with everything else. Yeah, well, <laughs> Charlie has a daunting task of doing that. I, I kind of stay clear because it's, you know, we got quite a few records and to try to get everything that everybody wants to hear in a set is close to possible. You know, we, we want, if we could, we play every record, all of them, all of them in one night, but of course we can't do that. But, uh, and besides, you know, as, as a singer also, I leave it up to him. He's singing the song, so he, he knows, you know, he's singing them. So, and he, you know, he does a great job choosing the song. Definitely helps. I, I see now that, um, you know, when you guys, uh, you know, hit the road, you guys had the live album recently before this new record that you guys have kind of filled out the band. It's cool that you can kind of uh, portray, you know, cover all the bases on all the albums with this full live band now. And you also, as a guitarist and a singer, you have a lot of responsibility also. So, you know, I always think about like, it's cool. So a lot of bands are awesome in the studio. They write great songs. They do these really wild productions and then they come out live and they can't quite pull it off. So it's cool that right. you guys are not have an opportunity to have this great live team, basically. Yeah, yeah, we, it's, it's pretty fun. You know, it's like you have Preston and Benji there. There's, you know, certain percussion that we put on the records before um, they got here. It, we couldn't, you know, play live, emulate live, and then certain guitar parts that we put down, we couldn't do it because Charlie and I are busy, you know, playing and singing, and, and uh, Britt, you know, got four limbs, he can only do so much, but to have them there to compensate for that and then come in and make that stuff work, it's, it's relaxing, if that makes sense. Yeah, it takes the pressure off a little. And, yeah, uh... totally. And especially the vocals are such a huge part of the band, right? It's the thing that people latch on to, not just Charlie. Uh, you, you guys always have had this kind of Eaglesy thing happening that I love where you guys harmonize a little bit. And, uh, but just really cool. Everybody kind of covers their parts and, yeah. you know, moments. And uh, so, you know, like obviously as much work as you have to put into your guitar playing, do you also like put that much work into your vocal stuff when you're not on the road or, you know, to get ready for an album or to get ready for a tour? I'll tell you what happened to me. Um, this during the pandemic, I kind of checked out. Um, I didn't sing a lot at home, which I always did. But I was just like, you know what? I'm going to relax and give my vocals a break for a while. And, and but when I got back out, we started playing some. There was, I was explaining to uh, Brandon, I was like, there's a high register I could hit, low register I could hit, because I hadn't warmed up at all for a whole year but there's some the middle part in there that I just wasn't, it wasn't happening. So I had to get my muscle back, you know, and, you know, took me a month or two, but it's, it's back. But yeah, I do, I do rehearse, you know, practice while I'm at home because whatever comes on, it's just natural for me to just stick a harmony to it. Even if it's not there, I just, yeah, it's fun. If that makes any sense. Yeah, man. Well, um, musicians, we hear things in our brains that don't actually happen. We hear, we hear, and we hear layers. I blame the Beatles and the Stones and Zeppelin and Sabbath and yeah. then, Liz then Lizzie and Skinner. I blame them all because they put all these all these ideas in our head for you know decades, and then it's like you hear a phrase, or you hear a riff, or you hear a, a measure, and you're like, oh, what would I do with that? And you, your brain just does it, and you play enough music, yeah. your brain just kind of takes over sometimes like yeah. good angel bad angel on the shoulder right <laughs> except with uh harmonies yeah you know it's, it's weird it's like when i'm sitting listening to a tune whether i have my guitar in my hand or, or just sitting humming along you know if there there's a part of it like i wonder what that would sound like i do this constantly i wonder what that would sound like so i'll grab my guitar and put a part in it it's not even in somebody else's song just to see if it'll work you know it's just a habit you know I don't know, I'm just, it's goofy, but, you know, sitting around the house with instruments, you can't help but grab one. That's awesome. Do you, do you just, uh, obviously you said you kind of, uh, you know, and I cannot blame anybody who, you know, like needed a break during the entirety of this thing, the weight of it all. Um, but generally speaking, do you, you know, pick up a guitar on a, on a Monday and write a song or just jam around or whatever, if you yeah. don't have, if you don't have like a schedule or an agenda? Yeah, I do. I do all the time. Like I'll put, um, I'm say, say I'm sitting in the living room and the wife, my man is in there doing something in the kitchen. I'll go to YouTube and, you know, they have drum beats. You know, I don't have a drummer around me down here. So, you know, drum beats. 
I'll just put on, you know, 120 beats per minute. And it's usually a solid track and I'll sit and goof off right away and she'll go, that sounds cool, you know, that kind of thing. And then I'll come down here to the basement and fool around with it you know, and recording. And some of the stuff that I write, you know, it's 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 not necessarily with Blackberry Smokish. It's a certain other type and stuff like that. I don't just stick to that one thing, you know. You know a lot of people are that way. They just write what comes out. That makes any sense. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you, uh, you ever uh, think about a solo album or pro uh, another kind of project when, if time ever allows? I think now that we're back, we're going to be back for like a few years and yeah. like straight, right. we're not going to have a break. But yeah, yeah, just you know, just to get the, the tunes that I have in my head out. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Brandon and I have been talking a lot about it, and uh, you know, he just had a baby, and uh, during the pandemic, he couldn't go anywhere anyway, so it was hard for us to get together, you know, I'm a face-to-face -face person with that kind of stuff. I want to be there playing in front of him, you know, like next to each other, going this note, and I'll start touching the piano and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it's it's really, it's not hard to write the way we're talking, you know, but it's easier and more inspirational when you're with a person, to me. Yeah, it's but good yeah, to have a partner. I have definitely thought about definitely been, actually been thinking about it for a while you know so eventually like you said when the time gets to it i'll be able to get to it but, but yeah yeah and just going to the bar oh. is going to be an amazing experience like you know if you get to go out at all because we've all been <laughs> pent up i think you know I, I joke that we're going to be like vikings on the shore just to see our friends and have a beer and put money in the jukebox and just hang out totally. man. oh man that is totally true just i might totally. cry <laughs> I'm a grown ass I man. I may very well cry. Right. So what we do, what we normally do, um, the doc, myself, and Brandon, we usually go. We're on tour, which you just mentioned that, which is so funny. Um, we usually either either on a day off or after a show if they're open. We go to arcade bars. It's you know vintage arcade mm. that you know it's a full bar in it, and we just sit and drop quarters and play and drink and crack up the entire time it's just fun nice do you have a favorite bar in uh in the states uh, yes i do um they in, in colorado there's actually two of them there they're called uh, one up you know like a video game one up and two up two up i think is next to the ogden theater and uh but one up was the original original one and i've shut those places down many a night Awesome, awesome. Yeah. You got a favorite uh, video game ever, an arcade game? Um, I have them here at the, at the house. I have, I'm an Asteroids fan, you know, and Frogger. I love Frogger. That's, that's the goofy part of me, man. I, I I'm, still a, I'm still a kid in here. Yeah, that's good. You got to be a big kid for life, man. Um, you lose that little part of you and, you know, the grown-up responsibilities of the world to drive all that spirit out of you, but it's good that you keep it. Um, I just got a couple more for you, man. You've been awesome. I love hanging out with you and, and hearing all this stuff. Um, you know, I think a lot about uh, music scenes, and I've been a huge fan of uh, the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia and those live music venues. You guys recorded the Tabernacle. I know Masquerade mm -hmm. moved. I was glad it didn't go completely out of business. I was sad yeah. when they moved out of the original place, but like, you know, I worry about them. Um, the future of live music after this thing. And I feel like, you know, some places have gone out and some places have sustained, but, uh, you know, Atlanta has always had a tremendous music scene of any genre and any stripe, which is really unique. It's not like some cities are like Chicago is indie rock and other mm -hmm. things and LA is LA, but like, you know, Atlanta is very special, man. And it's important that we uh, preserve these places. I agree a hundred percent, a hundred percent, hundred and fifty percent. Yeah, you're right. It is. Scary thought to think that they won't be, some of them won't be there, you know. But um, Atlanta's, Atlanta's got a, quite a places to play, and they're very important, you know, to the scene. And uh, thank God they are still there, you know, what what we have known. I mean, I'm sure there's other places that I don't even know about in Atlanta that are fascinating places to play. Um, like you said, it's got a huge music scene, no matter what type of music you know um but yeah there's at least most of the places we played and started playing in they're still there you know most of them but we didn't play a lot in atlanta when we started 
we use we just immediately hit the road and then there's a saying it's like um well my saying it's like people will drive 300 miles to come see us play outside of atlanta and when you're in atlanta you can't get your friends to drive three miles to see you play. <laughs> it's weird but you know it, but a lot of people will come from out of town to go to this place very important there right on uh and uh and thank you guys again you made you could have made your live record anywhere in the world you made it at home which is great yeah, support yeah. A, support that local scene get that local your family and your local crowd yeah. in there and uh but uh, yeah, yeah, these their choices they do get made. My dog is going crazy. I don't know why. Uh, the, <laughs> these choices get their choices, and it's cool that you guys chose to do that. Uh, I like to end these interviews with a wild card question. Um, so the one that I don't ask one very often, but one I have for you is: uh, three guests for dinner, living or dead. You pick three people who you would pick to have dinner with. Oh mm. wow, man! Um, my dad the awesome to have him there just to probably just wanted me to laugh you know <laughs> um uh, at the moment randy rose and uh marvin gay you know that'd, that'd be the three that's why we asked the question my friend i love it paul jackson of blackberry smoke man thank you so much for hanging out with ghost cult congratulations on you here georgia the fantastic new album on three-legged records man thanks for hanging out with us and thank please be, keep being safe and keep your head up and i can't wait to see you guys on a stage eventually again soon thanks man you be careful too man I'll see you soon